great show though the other night. I was glad to see that. They've had some, they've had some really good, uh, they've had some good racing this year at Langley Speedway in some, in some of the divisions. I saw his head with a monster truck that. with a pace car on it. Did you get, the, uh, David, did you get to drive the monster truck pace car? Is this what your job was? No, the closest I got to do was stand beside it. Okay. <laughs> You can step ladder to get in the darn thing. We could we could have put you in the passenger seat of the, of the ride truck if you're on it. That, that would have been you know that would have been neat having that as a pace vehicle, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, we were going to bring it was going to bring the uh, the race truck out here, but that thing burns so much fuel, and uh, I mean he he, he was going to run that around the racetrack with the ride truck. It it don't burn nowhere near the fuel. So oh good. It runs off regular racing fuel, where the the monster truck burns off nothing. Wow. Racing fuel. That stuff's expensive nowadays, too. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, welcome to Let's Talk Racing. Hey, I got a little bit of Probably shy one person, Sammy, but you never know when he's going to show oh, up. Sure. Uh, he'll be there. He'll be there. He's coming down the interstate. I'm passing in the background. Yeah. Yeah, he comes from the, down from Newport Newsway, so he may be having some of the issues you had, Terry. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 hit, I looked at the interstate, and as soon as I seen the car stop, I said, nope. I'll come back around the back. But, um, yeah, it, it was stopped on the interstate for a little while ago. Somebody said it had it shut down. I don't know before. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. And I heard that one, yeah. I was the radio right before, you know, before I left for work. I was sitting in the so, car, and, and then the guy would do the thing. So sometimes those oh, old radio stuff is not reliable. Wrong. He doesn't say anything about it. So. There you go. Park that mouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Is my mouse bouncing around on there? Yeah, I was all over. I'm getting drunk on it. Uh -oh. The video froze. Yeah. Let me see if that was me. I was che I was checking the background stuff. It just happens that the mouse has to roll over. It's stuttering. And Verizon's advertising whatever. You know, and I've got this darn thing, so I don't know what more I have to get. I'm not going to get it because I don't need gaming. It's entertainment. <laughs> see, this stuff is so much fun, Terry. You have to link Zoom uh -huh. over to another system called OBS. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then link OBS over to Facebook Live. Wow. So you we know what OBS is, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's all BS. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Huh? <laughs> that's all the man behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah, you know, everything was a lot. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Well, you just you got to have somebody blaming on it. <laughs> Watch it out. I'll take away your heart. <laughs> and your brain. <laughs> well, did anybody see the reports that, since we're live now, that it may be next year, Roush Fenway Keselowski racing, with Keselowski being a minor partner, who knows what percentage, and driver, and he may bump Newman out of the six car. <laughs> but uh, so it's been confirmed by a lot of sources in the know. Of course, they're not going to announce anything this early on. But, no, uh, they won't they won't announce anything until we get to the silly, now, to the silly thing. Uh, but but no. I mean, the big question is why? Haven't done Ralph have enough money to keep things going? Maybe not. I don't know. Or somebody's uh, bringing some money in. That's what I'd be ready to say. It's probably money coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, Keselowski is always, well, Keselowski had a truck team at one point. I don't know if he does anymore. Uh, from what I understand. But yeah, you're right. He was always wanted to be an owner, and he never signed an extension with Penske. He did a one year job this year with Penske. So, does his brother Brian still have a team going? I know for a while they did. I wish I knew. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, curious minds want to know. Yeah. Um, oh, what else was that I saw? Um, Kevin Harvick, he's going to drive uh, Xfinity uh, using, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Not Harmon, BJ McLeod, one of his cars. Yeah. Had a five on it. I think I thought. Yeah, I, I was I was surprised he wasn't using the. Uh, somebody else used the four. A Stuart Haas car or something. In Infinity. Yeah. Yeah. So they would have still had some from uh, Cole when he ran. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, uh, but so did they, didn't they change that car this year? The Xfinity car because the Mustang still had that high bumper and they painted a black panel to make it look like the grill. And they said they're going to change that car over to look more like the. I don't know. Um, oh, I heard Sammy. That's uh, so why he's sneaking in the front door. 
Bill's going on. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. but anyway, for those of you trying to figure out who this new guy is sitting up there, old, old high and pretty, it's Terry <laughs> Harris from uh, Blackhawk Performance. Actually, no, it's not Blackhawk. It's uh, High Impact Productions. And of course, everybody knows me about Terry Harris, you know, as far as Harris Trucking all the body shop. And, Why didn't you change it? Uh, my production company is the one that puts on all these shows and I mean, mar marathons and all that stuff. Okay. So we don't really do the you know, the racing parts and stuff like that. We do it through Harris Truck, but we don't really do it as much as we used to years ago. Hey, Sam. Hey, Haven't done it you know, as much as we used to years and years ago when you know, Blackhawk. But yeah, a lot of people still. Cool. A lot of people still uh, call up and this black hole. Yeah, this is black hole. What you need? <laughs> yeah. But so, do you are do you still sell parts there or? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of people still call up and say, well, I can't find this. I can't find that. Or I know problem. I can find it. DBA at black hole. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. Could have been selling parts fifty years out oh, there. <laughs> it was it was selling before before I was ever around too. So. <laughs> before you were gleaming dad's eye, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, How's your dad doing? He's doing good. He uh, he has still having some heart issues, yeah. and of course, and my dad is seventy eight. Uh, he will be seventy eight this year. He uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of stamina because yeah. of his heart when he walks. He like at the racetrack, we got a golf cart out there for him. And uh, but if he has to walk from here to the street out here, he's out of breath. Uh, but I mean, he's he still comes to work every morning. Uh, he don't do a whole lot, but he raises his cane. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what he always does, isn't it? Yeah. He'll see him coming. He's 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 coming. He's
you know, you have to you have to schedule these trucks way ahead of time. So these guys are already yeah. booked up. They're all in the United States. And um, so I had the seven trucks guaranteed. And um, now on May 28th, we're completely opened up. So I can put as many people in the grandstand as we want to. And, um, but you can't get more trucks. But seven trucks is a plenty for yeah, us. Plenty of show. I mean, a lot of truck, a lot of shows you go to, they don't have the four trucks. Um, and I wanted at least seven um, because that's what we had last year. And the trucks we got coming are, are, are good trucks. I mean, we got War Wizard coming in, uh, risen out of Florida. Was it last year or year before? Uh, it was 19. Yeah. I, I, I'm not worried about 20. I, I won't forget that year. So, <laughs> uh, the 19, we had them here. We had seven trucks. And uh, but we got uh, uh, War Wizard coming in. We got uh, Split Personality. We got uh, Black Stallion, Iron Warrior. Uh, got Overkill Evolution. Uh, toxic. toxic coming in. Uh, I mean, Toxic was here. Toxic would be the only returning truck, but he has a brand new truck this year. I don't think he's had but like two or three runs on it. Uh, I mean, it's a nice piece. Oh, it's a really nice piece. Uh, and he, I mean, and, and Corey and Jay are really good people, and they put on a good show with every show they go to, as well as all the other teams. Now, I'm, not, I'm not talking all, all the teams I've got coming are professional. They travel all across the United States. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Black Stallion and uh, Evolution were on their way to Florida two weeks ago, and they're down there, and they're coming from Florida back to this place to make sure everything's good, and then they're coming over to us. So, I mean, they're they're back and forth up and down the East Coast, all out through the Midwest. So, does, does, does Travis Mallory still do it? I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it. How, 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 how that girl and boy was engaged when they were here last year? You talking about Travis? He got they got married. They, got, they, they, married? Got, they actually got a son now. Uh, oh, cool. Yep, and uh, I think his name is Crew. Crew, I think his name. He, uh, I really haven't been keeping up with Travis too much. Travis, you know, got involved with another team and, and uh, sort of just went to work. Yeah. And uh, then he got married. So like, I think he is driving right now in the uh, with uh, Nitro Menace. I think he, I've seen where he drove it a few times. Travis is a good guy. He just, uh, you know. He's getting his stuff straight, and I'm pretty sure once he gets his family straight and nailed down and everything, he'll go back big time driving, I'm sure. Yeah. But like I said, all the teams we got coming um, are all professional teams. Mike Bothers Motorsports. Mike, you there? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just uh, – Dave, uh, David told me uh, he wasn't able to catch something on his PC, so I'm getting ready to go look up that. So. Oh, okay. The, uh, but Mike Bothers Motorsports is coming out of your town. Uh, he's bringing four trucks down. He's got uh, higher education, which I didn't mention that name earlier when I was saying the truck. That's actually a school bus. Really? It's a, it's a fiberglass body, yeah. but it's a school bus. It looks just like a school bus. It's good kids, for kids. The kids were all like that. And it's a full piece of <laughs> truck. It just looks like a school bus. Um, and then, of course, he's, he houses uh, Overkill Evolution, which is his son drives that, uh, Mike, Michael, I think, uh, Botters Jr. He, uh, at one time, I don't know if he still does or not, but at one time he was – Hold, held the record for walking the truck on the nose. I don't know how they, they call it stoppies. Yeah. They get it up on the front wheels and he walks it across. And he'll probably do that here, I'm sure. He's he is one of the best at that around. Wow. I mean one of the yeah, best. I see a big weight and like walking up on the front nose I'm like, how in the world? You gotta have a good center of balance to do oh, that. Well this is it's just that feel. I mean you know, they work that silver yeah. back and forth and what really amazes me is when they get it up on the wheels on stopping and, and he Turns the front wheel and he leans the truck to the left and the right on the back and walks it across. I mean, he does he does some amazing stuff, he really does. Uh, as well as all the other drivers. Um, War Wizard, yeah, I think he's pretty new, but from what I understand, he's a wild child. Uh, Jr. He uh, he likes to get some air. Yes, <laughs> he's, he's known for that. So, uh, we're I mean, we're gonna have a really a lot of fun and. Uh, they're going to tear some stuff up. You're, to, you're getting cars out there now? Oh, stop, yeah, I stopped no, by. I stopped by. I seen a truck yesterday. Yeah, they, 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 they were, were loading them up. We, <laughs> had, uh, maybe we got about 15 out here. We went up with 30 cars and a bunch of vans. Uh, we got some equipment in there where they can do their different tricks off of. And stuff cool. like that. So it's going to be a, this is a, an asphalt concrete show. Uh, okay. We're not going to have cool. all that big dirt piles like we had uh, simply because of the this first show of the year is a little tougher because the car series comes in after we get through, so it takes a lot of cleaning to keep them guys oh, yeah. so all, all I heard the last time we had it was crying about the red clay. Which is, I mean, I understand to a certain point. 
But, uh, I mean, to me, to me, I was raised to get the car and drive. You know, I mean, it's, the tracks are entertainment yeah. venue, so that's a race car. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, exactly. but they're, they're they, uh, the car tour was coming in, so we really had to clean the racetrack really well. So this year, I'm not doing all the dirt for the first show. Uh, we'll probably do a little more in the second show when we have it later in the year. Uh, what gets me is they got these small um, trailers, uh, mm -hmm. like storage trailers, but I mean, you know, like go down the road and small ones. And bank of dirt up these guys up there put these things over and stuff like that. I'm going That's to back flips. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> well, so, the back flips, uh, you probably won't see and you don't see too many back flips at small, at, at like a venue like ours. Right. But even the smaller shows. The only one you're going to see that at too much is going to be your, your Monster Jam shows. Um, Football thing. Yeah, stuff, like, stuff like that. Um, because of, you know, I mean, they're putting up a lot more than I can or any yeah. promoter can. For them guys to do that type of trick, uh, and plus that's very very hard on bodies oh, and, sure. and, and equipment. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about this body. It's hard on your personal body. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know about the trucks. Well, they got them. I'm sure they got a cushion seat in there. It gets spring loaded or whatever. They use the same. They use the same seats as your late model stock cars and Winston Cup champions. Right. Four containment seats. Yep. Same identical seats. Safety oh, seats. Yeah. Seats? You know, the Joys or uh, what's the other one? UMP. I, I can't remember the, all the names of the seats. Yeah, there's several of them out there. <laughs> but they're all, uh, they use full containment seats. So they're in the car just like them, where the Western Cup driver. Yeah. Uh, Gotta be. <laughs> they're looking like they're yeah. for the bottom of the truck, too, don't they? Got the there's of glass in the bottom. Yeah, the whole floor is, is plexiglass. Yeah. So yeah. They can, well, except for what they're yeah. yeah. sitting on. The, the, guys, the guys getting in the car, he's going up and goes underneath and goes up. Got a ladder in there? <laughs> <laughs> Climbs up the frame. Yeah. So Terry, like, Terry, 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 how many? Aircraft, you know? How many shows do you plan on uh, for that Memorial Day weekend? We have one on Friday night at 7 p.m. and one on Saturday night at uh, 7 p.m. We had a we had a daytime show scheduled for uh, on Saturday. We were going to do one at 12 o'clock, but the reason we put that in there was earlier when we were planning the show, and the reason for it was because we had limitations. I wanted more people to have a chance to come to the show, so we were going to have a third show just get more people in the grandstand. But as soon as they released, you know, the 28th, they were going to be full. I, I, I yeah. bought that show and took all the tickets that had been sold and moved them. They can come either night. They can come Friday or Saturday if you bought a okay. Saturday day. You know, I, I, I asked because I thought I heard that uh, last Saturday night that they had advertised it would be a noon, and a, a noon Saturday and a 7 o'clock Saturday show. So well, now it's be, just going to be the two. It would be sort of like. And it's even a worse scenario than, than say, you go out there with your late model stock cars and we run twin 100s, okay? And you run a 100 lap, okay, we're going to give you an hour, we're going to run another 100 laps. Yeah. Uh, and if you got a bunch of stuff to do the car, you can't get that thing ready. And you can just only yeah, too much work. double that with a monster truck, but they're going to tear stuff up and they got to service the shocks and all that stuff every, after every run. And um, they got to have some turnaround time there from 12. You figure if we started, you know, they knew it coming in, so they knew what I was trying to do, and they were okay with it. But I want to have all seven trucks running on both shows. So that's good. Really good yeah. Shows. So it gives them more turnaround time. Yep. And, and, and uh, now that we can have the crowd, that'll be great. It'll oh, be yeah. great for everybody. Oh, the yeah. crowd and the, those the, those folks putting on the show too. And we're bringing in some extra lighting. Also, last year, uh, I mean, when nineteen, we. It was a little dark in the middle of the pits uh, where they were running yeah. at because the racetrack's lit, but the infield's not. Um, but the uh, so I'm bringing in some extra lights to really brighten it up for the fans for their for their Good. enjoyment. So I mean, I, I'm really excited about this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is going to be. I, I waited for a year and a half because I had one planned for September of 2019. We had to cancel it, and then turned around and had to cancel everything in 2020. And yeah. Now, now yeah, we got one right here, and it's what. We can have all, man. I'm, 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 ready, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to see some stuff get torn up. I'm ready to see some stuff get torn up. Should be good. Come on, fight up the Glen, you too. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Is that Tony Steele's old car? Uh, well, it's actually it's not his oldest car. His oldest car uh, they wrecked at uh, Dominion. I think Bubba was driving it, and he got involved in an accident. Bubba got an outside wall, and they had to put a front and rear flip on it. Uh, I'm driving the the was a '50 car, the black car that was at Langley. Yeah. Uh, he had it, had a brand new snout put on it, and uh, we went down there, I think it was, I can't remember the date, it was Twins, Twin 35s, and uh, went out and qualified the car, was tight, it bottomed out really bad in time trials, so they made some changes, and I'm not real used to the bump stops, I'm, I'm getting used to them, um, you know, to race cars, and drive whatever, whatever I said I'm going to drive to, whatever the car is, but 
they went out in the first race and the car was really tight all through the night. And uh, I just ran really good lap time by myself. But yeah. in traffic, you couldn't run your line. So it made it tough to pass. Uh, we ended up seventh and um, started the second race and I was starting on the outside pole. And I told them in the pits, I said, look, free up as much as we can. And they really didn't know what they were going to do. So I said, well, I told Tony, I said, if I can get, if I can get by this guy, we got a chance at this thing. And I might have jumped the guy a little bit. I don't know. I got away with it. But we, we got out front and uh, we pulled out to almost an eight car lead, eight, eight, eight car in the lead, but it was all green. I was able to run my line. And we were running, I had, we were leading. We had uh, uh, Chris Johnson behind us. We had the uh, front was behind me and uh, both the Hummets and, and Moody was okay. all behind me. And we were pulling away still, but I was able to run my line. You know, lap 12, we about eight car lengths out, Tasha comes up. <laughs> and uh, like a dummy, I took the inside, typical driver, took the inside, yeah. you know, restart. I should have took the high side. And Chris knew I was tight. When I went to the corner, he just sent me down. And man, yeah. I could have I could have run up in the door. But I, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. do that. Not not for three or four hundred dollars. No, there. yeah. Uh, plus because all they're expensive to fix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we ended up finishing fourth. But it was uh, the car was Better, but it's still really tight. That's the first time y'all run that night? Yeah, that was the first time. Yeah, that's a pretty good night. Yeah. You know, we finished seventh, first, fourth, and second. I mean, we led, like I say, 12 laps over. So. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, and then my wife probably says I'm, says I'm an idiot for getting back in. <laughs> You've been out of them for a while, man. <laughs> 18 years. Yeah, you've been out of them for a long time. 18 years. <laughs> I, I quit driving and went coaching football, so. Yeah. But, uh, now, now, now I'm playing with monster trucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you'll really you, you, you you have one of them before yeah. long. I don't know about all that. Not unless my grandson wants one. My grandson wants one, I might buy one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got only got one set of parents in 80. Now your wife is going to have all those coaches, all those football yeah, parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm probably still going to coach. I mean, I, I coach in Emperor's Academy, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Coach your kids is fun. Oh, I love it. I love it. Anything for the kids. And that's the main reason I started doing the monster truck was uh, oh, yeah. I, I love to see the kids get so excited. Or something that you do, uh, oh, whether it be sports or whatever, whatever. But just the, they come up to the trucks and their their eyes get big. And you, I mean, and we're open. All the guys at the trucks that I have, they're open. Bring the kids right up, put them by the tires, take pictures of them, talk to them, give them shirts. I mean, they're they're so good with the young people as well as adults, of course. But you know, we're all we all want to see them smiles. Oh yeah. We all want to see them big yeah. eyes and smile when the kids walk up. It makes you day when they yeah. when they get excited about something. Especially when they see it for the first time. It's oh amazing. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yep. I mean, I hope y'all are going to come out with this thing. We're, we're, uh, it's a lot of work. I will tell you all that. I mean, these, these monster trucks are a lot of work to put together. Oh, yeah. Y'all worked out there for days getting the track done. Uh, we're, uh, eight, well, even up to the end, that's work too, but getting everything lined up, all the logistics of it and getting stuff lined up is a lot of work in these things. And, uh, you, still got, you probably started to contact people now for next year. I actually, I'm actually contacting them already for the September show. Okay. Uh, you know, of course, all my sponsors for this show, and I, I could list right now. I got a ton of sponsors coming on board. Um, I'm not gonna go through the names uh, right now, okay. but they'll all be on the, the pit wall down the front straightaway, down the fence line. They'll all be announced on the loudspeakers and stuff. But a uh, really great group of people, and um, they're all gonna be hopefully back for the September show as well. Yeah, some people come by. Especially getting kids involved into the kids. Kids are interested in it. They drag their parents out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did that. I did that when I angry opened in 63 or whatever. I nagged it. That one I might have missed, but missed one show in 63 when we opened that track. Right. And um, went to all the Grand National shows, like the rest of them were called. And um, then here at one championship was in 65. And he went down to Dog Track Speedway in the last race of the year. Uh, but they were Langley, and somebody put up a uh, hundred and ten dollars if Ned won the race because that would give him the most points for the year. And it's like points for Langley. He won the race, and he got the money, so they get the money. And he announced it that somebody had donated a hundred and ten dollars if from Ned only if he won the race, he'd get another hundred and ten bucks. So, uh, back in the days when that was like real money, <laughs> I got one good for you. The day after I got married, my first like, guess where I was at. 
Like Donnie Harris's garage. Oh, yeah. My dad told him to go home. <laughs> <laughs> My ex comes in the door. I'm ready to go home. Your dad said, You better go, Sam. <laughs> You're already going to be starting to sleep on the other bed. <laughs> on the couch. Yeah, I'll tell you what, back in the day, we, we worked on the cars and they would lay on creepers and you know, to sleep under the cars because we worked so hard that night. We have to leave the next morning going to the racetrack, whether it be Martinsville or yeah. wherever. And then uh, I've seen it many times. I've slept it many times in the front seat of the racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> I sit in the seat and just go to sleep, man. Yeah. Curtis Turner was famous for that, too. I mean, Dale, Dale Earnhardt seen it a few oh, times yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. They had a picture of Curtis Turner, and I said, it might have been in the first race at Rockingham, which I was there, and he won that race. But he'd been out party the night before, cracked some ribs, didn't tell anybody about it. He was sleeping in the car. Oh, and uh, after the race, in fact, we told anybody to crack some ribs, doing something up to him. But that was an interesting combination. Wood Brothers being such a um, one of the clean family, and, and Curtis was a hell of a mm -hmm. women's skirt chaser and all yards. I mean, I, yeah. I remember out at Langley one night, we had a really long red flag. I took a nap for 20 minutes in the car. Yeah. And just said, so somebody yell on the radio when it looks like they're getting ready to start doing something. Yeah, they, I can remember most of the red play. Most times the car was just too hot for me to sleep on the bed. Yeah. You do relax in them pretty. I mean, you see, it should be comfortable enough to yes. relax in anyway. If it's not, then you're not sitting in the car right now. Yep. Uh, you got something wrong with yeah, your seat. something wrong. I mean, you should be able to, you should be, able to be relaxed in the car, um, in any car you drive. I, I don't know. We'll see. One of the things, my body temperature is a little lower than normal. Mm -hmm. So I was actually able to feel cooler. <laughs> I don't know. They get hot. I mean, in all pro yeah. cars, back when I drove all pro cars, this one had no air inside of them at all. And uh, they were really hot on me. I, I ran the uh, 400 lap race in July <laughs> at Nashville. And uh, I'll tell you what, that was hot. That's a tough track. Yeah, that was hot. Yeah. Sam, we got to make we that connection quick. <laughs> oh. We had that. Uh, we went to the in Rockingham one year. They, they, post, they used to run it early oh. in the year or late in the year. Hey, and I found out why when they had a rain out and they re ran the race several months later instead of running the next day. We got there in the Sand Hills, North Carolina, not too far from Darwin and Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Hotter than hell. Mm -hmm. And you're in that bowl. And I got up on top of the hill and could feel a little bit of breeze. I don't know how to drive and survive. And I went there to get something to drink. And I said, you know, they sell Pepsi products because it's Joe Francis. Pepsi guy. <laughs> whatever. And uh, I'm a boring day or David here. Uh, no. <laughs> and I said, uh, and I said uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, give me a Pepsi. And he goes, I ain't got it. I said, well, what do you got? He said, I got nothing. What do you mean? I said, I'm out of cups, I'm out of ice, I'm out of everything. If people come and get me something to drink. And I said, you got water? No, I got nothing. I got nothing. I ain't got a cup anymore. And uh, it was blazing. I got so hot and sweaty that I quit sweating and I could feel the salt on my skin. Yep. And I found out later that that's a good thing to have. That is <laughs> yep. getting ready to get close to heat stroke. I don't know how many people they, that they had to treat uh, in the stands. It was gone off on. That's the reason they never ran those races in that time of the year because it was blazing hot. That's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. One of the biggest problems we have when the Hampton heat is out. No, yeah. We just, when we do the Hampton Heat, it takes the word heat, you know, just uh, honestly. No, oh, yeah. um, and it's tough on everybody that day. Well, we got the, uh, we got the, what, the 100 lap uh, Sean Memorial uh, race. Yeah. That's, I think that's what, in September, first part of September. Uh, uh, August? August? Yeah, August. I don't that's, remember that's that. I think it's scheduled. That's going to be hot. I mean, yes. I'm going to run that race uh, at Langley uh, and modified. And uh, we might run the, I think it's the 26th. I think I'm gonna run out there with my cops. But uh, go back. I'm gonna go back to. I'm gonna go back on what I'm here to talk about real quick. Is the monster trucks? I want to let everybody know Good. that uh, the tickets right now. You can go online and buy the tickets at Langley-Speedway.com. Uh, when you go to the website, you click on buy tickets. Every event that they have tickets for sale for will pop up. I think there's a picture of Toxic on that link that goes to Toxic Truck. So you can uh, bring that up and click on it and buy your tickets online. All right, Roger. You can save a little bit on tickets doing that. Buy tickets. Let's see. And then uh, also, the right side of the screen here. 
There we so go. You buy tickets. So all the all the all the He's stuff. He's got a big TV up. in front of us, folks. That's what yeah. we're doing here. All of them come up. You just come down, and you'll see the monster truck that I think it's got like said, put it at the top right there. There it is. Yep. And the two, the three shows are listed, but if you click on another one, it says no tickets available for that coach. That show has been canceled. Uh, so you see the two shows that are highlighted. Click on that. That's going to take you to TicketLeak.com, and you can buy you can buy the tickets, or you can go directly to TicketLeak.com and buy this. Uh, either way you want to do it. Uh, or there's a phone number you can call at 757-773-5363. That's 757-773-5363, and you can buy tickets on that phone line as well. Uh, tickets at the gate will be on sale uh, uh, at 2 o'clock on was Friday picture? and 2 o'clock on Saturday. Where was that picture taken at? I see something about Hampton back behind That's Langley. Me. That's Langley. Langley. Langley, okay. That was, that was uh, in 2000. 19. Uh, 19, and that was Toxic's old truck. Like I said, he's got a brand new piece this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Ford. Oh, it's Ford. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, how much does it cost to put one of them trucks together? Uh, well, I'll give you an example. Like the, the truck that uh, that was there on last Saturday, the, uh, that was his new race truck, was 185 grand. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he had just put a brand new motor in it, which was, uh, I said it was $38,000 for the, for the motor. Yeah. He'll, uh, <laughs> it was a 568 cubic inch uh, big block all wing room chrome. I mean, she's putting out, I think, it's like, all. I think it's 1,650 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just I just noticed something different that I didn't know you guys had. A VIP judge package? Yeah, the judge package, we only sell in 10 for a night. Okay, what that what that is, is they actually are judges of the show. Uh, if we get enough people doing that, we'll have them up top. If not, we'll use the ones that we have, or we'll choose people. But uh, that gets you up on the, the um, spotter stand. I call it the crow's nest, but it's up on the very top. The spotter the stand. Show. Uh, you'll have access to the VIP um, uh, sky Sweet. box, which is down in the corner. Um, where my sponsors are, you'll be able to go in there with them and eat and hang out and talk to the drivers that walk up there to that and stuff like that. VIP um, pit pass also. Yeah, VIP pit pass. They're limited also. I think there's 100 for a night. Uh, that that is uh, you can, you have a VIP pit pass where you, it doesn't get you in the skybox because the sponsor and, and uh, judge. But you can go anywhere on the racetrack. You can watch it from ground level in the pits behind us. We have a stone wall where you'll be behind that, or you can watch it from the outside pits in the in the uh, spotter tower, or you can go in the grandstand. But you're able to come back and forth with that VIP. Um, and you also get a sh um, show shirt and stuff like that with it. A lot of tickets huh. listed on there. There's a bunch of different uh, VIP parking. You get to park in the outs in the in outside pit area. You don't park out in the front. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that comes along with it. You're bringing your camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a lot different when you see it from ground level. But uh, at Langley, with the way it's designed and the way we have everything open like that, the grandstand is ideal for watching these trucks. Because you actually know if you set it midway of the grandstand. And the truck is still above your head. That makes you realize how much air that truck's got under. <laughs> I mean, when that front tire, if you're at midway of the grandstand, that front tire is still, still looking up at the truck. You're like, wow. That was, yeah, that was amazing. Saturday, when we were down on the start finish line getting ready for the ceremonies to start, when he pulled that thing up. Oh, yeah. I, it's just, I, until you're there, you just don't realize how big it is. Yeah, that truck that Saturday night, we'll talk about that a little bit real quick. That, that was the ride truck. That truck is actually, um, he said he, it cost him $145,000 for the chassis in the truck. That has an L, LS1 engine in it. Okay. It's not blown enough, but it does, I think it's got right at about 650 horsepower or something like that. But uh, it's a full, this ride truck that we have this year is a full blown monster truck chassis, shocks, everything. It, and it's got this. If you took it apart and put the blown motor in it, it would do the same thing as the regular monster truck did. Uh, the one we had last year was great people with Sasquatch. I mean, I love them to death. I could not get in touch with them this year. I wanted to have them back. Uh, I think they had a few things going on with their family, uh, some illnesses and stuff. Um, but I haven't been able to get in touch with them. I hope I can have them back for the September show as well with Split Personality. But this truck, Split Personality truck, is a, a true monster truck chassis. Uh, and it's, it's going to give you a different ride. It's going to be uh, maybe a little stiffer. You're going to feel everything in the seats. Yeah. Uh, Sasquatch was a little more softer. It would lean you know, a lot. This truck is a lot more rigid. So you're going to feel everything. Like, like a go-kart. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to feel everything when you, when you hit stuff. So they're going to get some really cool rides with it. We're going to actually have some obstacles out where he's running at. 
of course, when our goal would be running, jumping over cars with people, but they're going to run over some cars, they're going to run over some different ramps and stuff like that with it. And he'll give them a ride. I mean, I, I, this boy that drives it, artist, uh, I don't even know his last name, but uh, he, he drives the truck, and he's new to the to the monster truck world. I want to tell you that. He's a new driver. Uh, he's not a closer. Like, you know, somebody that's got a lot of experience as a closer. But uh, he's going to put on a good show. But he, uh, he's he got... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of people help him. A lot of drivers right now that are helping him, teaching him, and telling him what he needs to do, what he doesn't have to do. But give you an example of how these guys are. He brings the truck up to the start finish line. I told him, I said, when you come up this time, we had some people in the back of the truck and gave him a ride out there. And this was yeah. the, during the first, starting the late model race. He pulls up, and he climbs out. Well, the announcer is not there yet. Uh, Buck was working his way over to the start finish line. Well, yeah. he says, uh, we got to do something. I said, what are you talking about? So he runs and jumps on my golf cart, starts doing donuts backwards with the golf cart with his leg hanging out the side in front of the grandstand. People are going crazy in the grandstand. Said, what are you doing? He said, you left the key in it. And he runs off with the golf cart. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the way these guys are. I mean, they're, they're good people and they're wild. They're, just, they're wide open in everything they do, the way they talk. And, and that's what I like about them. They're honest. They're going to tell you exactly what they think. <laughs> but you, you, you can tell by the crowd. You can tell by the crowd reaction. They really enjoyed seeing it there the other day. Uh, Matt Saturday night was there the entire time he was there, and it just the buzz of throughout the whole grandstand. Oh, you, I, mean, they, I mean, these trucks. You, you, like you said, it, it's it's the it's the presence of that truck. I mean, the kids seen that, heard that thing fire up. They come running around behind the grandstand. I mean, we had to really have people there <laughs> say, "Stop right there! Don't go to close your neck." And then when we got we brought the military guys out to the national anthem. And that was really mm -hmm. cool to see the guys. And you know, I told him, I said, "Well, you're gonna be buckled in." And the commanding sergeant said, "Well, the pennant stand up." I said, "No, they can stand up." He said, "If they don't stand up, they're gonna be in trouble for the national anthem." <laughs> I said, no, we, "I said, no, we're gonna stand for the national anthem." Okay, what kind of seatbelts we got on? And, uh, yeah. But that was really cool to see the guys and get recognition from the grandstand and, and uh, it was. show the appreciation for our, our military as well as our first responders. And, uh, I mean, we're all about. Showing our appreciation to, to them, them fine people that, uh, that protect us every day. So. That's good. Now, I do have a question. I'm trying to remember. Didn't they have like a, a, a SUVs out there doing jumps and stuff and everything yeah, else? Yeah, that, uh, that was your tough truck competition. Yeah. We're not going to have that at, the, at the, this show on May uh, because we can't have I'm, – I'm afraid to bring them guys in because of the asphalt. Yeah, the racetrack, and they they go sort of nuts. I'm afraid they're going to mess <laughs> and gouge the racetrack or something. So they don't care if a tire falls off; they're going to keep going. Uh, but uh, we're going to bring them back in September, but um, because we can do you know a few different things in September, but we don't have the yeah. year. But uh, we go. I mean, we have the, the seven monster trucks, which we're going to do four competitions. We're going to have racing, of course, which we're putting bonus money up for racing, which is going to make the guys run even harder. Uh, we'll be Chicago style racing this year where they're actually facing each other when they take off. Uh, and you'll pass each other at the finish line going opposite way. So you'll see the trucks. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do our two wheel skills, which is the stoppies, the slap wheelies, the, the bicycles where they stand up on the two wheels, anything they can do to get that two wheel uh, two wheels uh, skill going. And we've got donut competition, and of course, we've got freestyle. And freestyle oh, good. Where, freestyle is when they just turn it loose. But we have the quad wars back in town. Uh, we got a team coming out of New York, actually really out of New York this time. Uh, they're coming down from New York and they're going to take on a team from here out of the south. Uh, should be should get pretty easy. Uh, they, uh, they 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 run their things pretty hard, and I have, you have to sort of keep them apart. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they get a little heated. I mean, last year uh, we had uh, it was a little more. Uh, Southern, because we had a lot of local guys, but we did have a couple of northern guys that came down. And if you remember down in the corner, uh, one of them clipped one of them, and clipped him about two times over there. Going, coming <laughs> yeah. bottom, and I think he almost got in a fist fight over the corner. But, I mean, you would think they were running for ten thousand dollars, and they're and they're not. I mean, they're, not, they're, they're running for they're running for a little trophy. <laughs> but uh, oh, they're, uh, they're gonna put on a really good show. I mean, and then we have the ride truck, of course, which would be riding all day long, and also now. All y'all is buying tickets. Do not forget, before each show, we have a pit party. Okay, the pit party starts, uh, I think I think we got the one starting at 5.30 every night. Gates open at 5, you work your way in, you come on down the front straightaway. All the trucks are going to be on the front straightaway back end. We're going to have uh, 
the music there. We have a DJ with a big stage going on. We're going to have um, a great big slide thing for the kids. I'm missing a huge uh, that um, they'll be able to ride, slide down this thing, climb whatever they want to do on that. You remember um, that, Terry? Huh? You remember that now? It's for the kids, not for so, you. Yeah, I'm a good man. Say, can't then, take uh, the kids out of them. I will tell you, we'll, we'll have the ride truck going also during pit parties. The whole time we're doing pit parties, uh, all the drivers will be there to talk to, get autographs, uh, and we'll have some games and stuff for the kids throughout. We have door prizes. Uh, we'll be giving away stuff um, during the pit parties all the way through. At six thirty, everybody's got to leave, go back to the grandstand, except for the VIP holders, of course. But they got to go back up to the grandstand. And that's when we will start our uh, getting stuff ready for driver introduction and national anthem and prayer and all that stuff. So, and then we'll just turn them loose after that. I mean, we're going to go right into racing directly after that. So it's going to be a fast moving, hard hitting, metal flying. I mean, everything. It's going to be a it's going to be a wild show. That's good. We're getting ready to be joined. But anyway, so, um, now so, why why couldn't they do like a little miniature track for the the SUVs inside the pit area where you know where you got all the asphalt there? It's not going to hurt the track there. Well, you know, the SUV you talking about the uh, the tough trucks? It was yeah. just a it was it's, it's just a uh, a lot more planning involved in it. Like I say, this show uh, we were limited when we started this thing really bad, so we didn't want to over overbook, uh, but. You know, then after we got the word that we're going up, then we started bringing more in and more in and more in and more in and spending more money, spending more money, spending more money. And yeah. Uh, now I'm deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in the hole. So. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm really I'm really psyched about this thing. I mean, I just jumped a, a Red Bull on a on a, a coming over here, and I, that ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just excited about the show. <laughs> I'm ready to see some stuff get tore up. <laughs> I'm good. So relax when it's over. Oh, yeah. I'll relax when it's over. <laughs> that, 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 you see who's joining, right? Yeah, I see that. You, you see where he's see out you... hanging out, right? Out, out in the water. Out, out in the water, water right either yeah, relaxing or fishing. Like when, when he gets connected back again, it's all more, more water where you saw him hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Connor had a good, he had a good run. Uh, yeah. He really did. The car looked good. Stayed stable all night long. I mean, he ran a really good line all night yeah. all around the racetrack. Messed up their win streak at the, the Butterbean had. Was it three in a row here? Butterbean was pretty fast. He was coming, but uh, Connor had such a good line. Yeah. It would it would have been a, it would have it would have been a mistake by Connor for Butterbean to be able to get by him. And, you know, It'd be did. nice if he was here so we could he could listen to us talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> He might, he might pop back up here in a month. Uh, yeah. He's still he connected. He's whipping all the old men out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all we do. Everything well, right. Butterbean's going to Hampton City, right? Is he going to Hampton City, I think? I don't know. Um, I don't know where he's going to They it. staggered the graduation, so my daughter works at, at, at Longwood out in Farmville. And Hampton City is not too far out from that. And they staggered the yeah. graduation instead of having it on the same day. Long, long was going to be first, and he just had it, as a matter of fact. And then uh, I think the city will be next, this coming weekend, I guess. Uh, they pushed it back from Mother's Day because it just went to Villanova. And they had uh, the great. I didn't realize you totally disappeared on me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it boat sunk. <laughs> Connor, we see a lot of sky and a lot of water. You're trying to make us jealous? You see your sunglasses? Uh, no, I just, just trying to get a little afterward remedy here. There you go. Congratulations, man, on your win Saturday night. That was uh, Thank you. It was very good. Run. I was just I was just telling the guys that uh, they were talking about. I said you drove a really good race. You had pretty much a perfect line around there, and, and they were talking about Butterbean. I said, well, it would have took a mistake by you for him to even have a chance to get by, and you were you you had you were holding a pretty wheel, man. It looked really good. Well, I appreciate it. Thank y'all. You went out. You're having fun. Oh. We're halfway to having fun. We haven't really done anything yet. We're, I think we're a little early, but uh, we'll see what happens as the night comes into it. Well, I was actually talking about Saturday night during the race. You were, you were, you seem to be smooth throughout the race. Um, and I know typically when you start running and have a good night like that, you really enjoy it. And uh, you, you, to me, you look like you're on a rail. You were going very well. Yeah, we had a, we've had a really good race car this year. Um, 
you know, we we lost the, the hundred lap open at night. You know, Greg and I got together. Um, but oh, I think I lost y'all. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, I'm here. Here. Yeah, so you know, we had a good car for the hundred lap for, for open at night. Just you know, had some had a little running with old Greg, but we're all good with that. Move forward, and you know, brought a good car for the twins. Brought a good car for the in this past Saturday. So, um, I'm very fortunate to have a, have a bunch of guys that you know they care about it just as much as I do. So that if I'm not in the, if if I'm not the one busting my hump, they are they are. So, there you go. good deal. I was looking at their qualifying times, and it wasn't by tenths; it was by hundredths. Oh, yeah. These guys are getting separated yeah. by. Kind of, I'll say one thing: you're making us all jealous by seeing that water out there. Oh, yeah, we yeah had, 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 it's a good night. Beautiful. We uh, so got lucky. There's no wind out here because I have a flat bottom skiff. So if it's if there's any wave action, it's a long ride out and a long ride in. <laughs> where, where, where you at right now? Excuse me. Where you at? Where you at right now? I'm off of Grandview Beach. Oh, okay. We're, we're we're seeing if we can catch a drum. There you go. Yeah, they say they're catching pretty good out here right now. Yeah, we've uh, we've done pretty good the nights before. I think, like I said, I think we just need to need to let let it get a little darker. Yeah. There it is. Well, that was one thing I learned about him uh, last last Saturday. I think we talked. Might have been before then about, about how much he really loved to go fishing. I, I, I'm not really sure which he loved the most, fishing or racing. <laughs> well, he's on the uh, boat, so we're going to race cars. That should answer your question for you. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we do shop, shop nights Tuesday and Thursdays, and then, um, you know, that's for the whole team. And then I'm Dad and I are usually on it, just picking here and there about every night. So, yeah, last yeah, of yeah. I still, 2019, when I was running for the championship against Greg, all I did was all I did was race, 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 and sit there and think about going faster. And it kind of made me lose my mind a little bit. So I've really focused on, you know, trying to find time for to do normal things also, and you know, have a have a a life more than just racing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not hate on the racing but i think you know balancing all aspects of life helps me in each of my, each of the other aspects because i don't get devil don't, don't get tired of the other one exactly. you got to have some of your own me time to go play and yep. do whatever in this case you love going fishing so rock and roll i used to yep. come, go out there and go down to where it gets to the point where it dropped down to about 25 feet deep and catch just about everything out there i hear you well, that's what that's where we're at right now. We're sitting about twenty foot of water, so we'll uh, I'll keep y'all posted. <laughs> you ever you ever snag any sharks out there? Uh, I'm not much of a shark guy. I'm uh, I stick to mostly cobia fishing, so but it's a lot early for them. So that's why we're out here trying to catch a drone. Yeah, spot, spot, spot. We were we were out there a few years back when I had my boat. Three of us went out. We were fishing and. Sharks were hitting everything, and we just kept pulling them in. They were three, four foot long. I said, well, shoot, they, you can cut them up and do everything. And then before we knew it, we had 50 of them suckers. Then we pulled back in, and they said, oh, yeah, by the way, it's a two-shark limit per person. We are giving away as many as we could. Did you run it? It's running. Yep, he's, he's working on something already. <laughs> So somebody hooked something. <laughs> oh, I heard that. Yeah, they got, uh, they got, they got, they got this kind of Saturday night. They've got twin weight models, so they go back from uh, with a hundred lap race to another twin. Um, should be another good Saturday night. Bluefish. <laughs> yeah, we just had it run, but uh, I think we're just getting eaten up by some bluefish. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, I, pre- I appreciate y'all for having me, and uh, hopefully we can keep it going this Saturday. <laughs> catch some fish, man. Yeah, yeah, catch, that's what we were just talking about. You got uh, the twin late models again coming up this weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got twin 50. So, uh, you know, we were very strong in the first 50 lap run last week, and then uh, I overthought it for the second run and over-adjusted the car and killed us. For the second one, so I, uh, we've hit the, hit the drawing board a little bit with some adjustments we're going to try for this next second, second 50, okay. and uh, see what we got for them. Let me ask you a question, Connor. Do you like, do you like the, uh, we talked about this, I talked about this with your dad, and we, were, we talked, me and your dad talked a little while, on, I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday, I was at the racetrack, and he come up there, we were talking about old times back, you know, years ago with that Orange County and stuff like that, but did, uh, do you like the Twins, or do you like the, the single one hundred lap of races like you did from what's your, what would you prefer? If I could have it my way, I'd do a single one I'd do a single one fifty every yep. week. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, but I, I like the hundred lappers. I think we've gotten to the point with late mile racing where you know, anything longer than a hundred is considered a big race now. So yep. Yep. um I just think as I've gotten older and more mature, I've real I've kind of found my discipline for those longer races because I remember I used to love twins because I could never win the first race. <laughs> I'd, always, I'd always bet like I'd always you know try to fall in like sixth or something oh, yeah. or maybe even seventh eight, and then just just try to burn my stuff up the whole second race to stay ahead of everybody else. <laughs> but uh, it works but sometimes. I, as I've gotten gotten older. And, and one, we've gotten our cars a lot better. Um, I mean, when I started late mile racing, I, I, I didn't even know how to set tow because, um, you know, all my Legends car stuff was maintained by uh, Stephen Ross out of Charlotte. So mm-hmm. other than changing the oil and stuff, we didn't really do much much work to them. And when we started late mile racing, you know, Brandon Butler set the car up for us. And then I just simply would load it in the trailer, go race, and then take it back home. And then my second year was when Langley shut down, and that's when I got paired up with Mark. And the funny thing is, Mark and I actually got paired up because at the end of uh, la- at the end of the previous year, it was actually a, I had a chance at winning my first race. And Mark moved me all out of the groove up into Greg, and Mark ended up winning, Mark ended up winning the race, I think, and I, I spun out and some stuff. So Mark, I guess. Uh, you know, we, t- we talked a little bit that off season and my dad actually helped him fix one of his dad's guns. His dad's really into shooting, uh, you know, like 22 target practice, I guess, or like competitions. So we helped him fix a gun and I guess in repayment, he was like, you know, if y'all have a good race, like, let me know. So he went to Dominion and he started helping and just the changes he would make just, you know, I thought, I thought he was a rocket scientist by, by what he was doing. Yep. And then, you know, we got, we became, you know, basically big brother, little brother, you know, we did everything together there for those four years. And, you know, he just, I've just always been a sponge with that stuff. And he's been a really good, he was a really good teacher and still is. I mean, I, I go to his trailer every week asking him for suggestions and, uh, you know, he's never steered me in the wrong way. And he, he's, he, he's pretty much the reason why I've learned what I've learned. Good. Mark, Mark's a good guy. He uh, he's helped he helped a lot of people, and we helped yep. him. my dad and me actually set him up his first late model race that he won was down at uh, Somerville, South Carolina. He uh, I had a Jack Tamp motor, and uh, we took his car and put my Jack Tamp motor in, and he went down there and kicked the butts at, at, at Somerville down there. But uh, that was his first late model race. He, won. <laughs> he he still talks about that because we we took a dually down there and uh, had to. Trail, his trail behind this dually we borrowed from Matt Mullins we're going to tow it for him. And we got to, he had dual tanks. And by the time we got to Richmond, had a big old fill 454, and we got to Richmond, he had to fill it back up full of fuel. Mm, Mark like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he said Bill, Bill, Dick, he, Bill Diggs had to come out of pocket just to get him, finish getting him there. <laughs> <Yeah. guess. laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely helped me helped me on that side of things and then you know like nick smith helped me a ton growing up racing legends cars and teaching me different disciplines behind the wheel so i've had, i've been fortunate to you know have been shadowed or you know working with a bunch of good guys who have really you know taken taking their time to really go out of their way to help me become who i am behind the wheel so 
you know, I, the list goes on and on and on, but you know, we're, I think we're, we're one of the cars to beat now. So I'm, I'm, it's been a long journey, but I'm thankful it all happened the way it did. That's good. It's the way you always want to be. Brian, are you thinking of doing any more ARCA stuff, or are you about done with that deal? I'm, I'm a boat salesman. That's, how, <laughs> that's what it's going to be. So when I when I come to that red gate, I'm a race car driver. When I go out the red gate, I'm I'm looking to sell a boat. So <laughs> not uh not giving up by no means. Um, um you know, I, I hopefully can get get an Xfinity car or something here or there at a short track and really try you know try my hand at that. But I think as far as Arca, unless it was a really good deal, I just think the money doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, so. Get, get that sponsor's uh, money, yeah, lads. <laughs> yeah, it's about seventy-five grand to run one race with a good team, where I could take, you know, I could take that money, and that's that's life-changing money for my late model program. So, oh, yeah, I just I'd rather take I'd rather take the money I do find and build upon what we've worked on for you know the past five years versus go out on a, on a limb and spend it on one event. Smart move, smart man. <laughs> smart smart man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, probably having a lot more fun late model racing. <laughs> uh, I I think the thrill behind all the big stuff was the fact that I was out there chasing, you know, chasing my dream, and you know, a kid from Hamp Hampton was out there racing a daytime and uh, stuff like that. And yep. you know, it's um, it's it's been something that I've been really conflicted with my whole young adult life because of how much I do enjoy racing, mm -hmm. and it's something I've had to really come to grips with. Um, you know, that I, I probably will never get, you know, that Josh Berry chance or whatever you want to call it, just because of the way the sports sw swung. Yeah. But, um, but, but at the same time, you know, I, I can't sit here complaining about it because it's not like I've been dealt a rough set of cards. You know, I, I have a great late model program. I, you know, got a good education, good job, you know, working on building a life and, you know, just enjoying racing for what it is, you know, just, a, just something that I enjoy on Saturdays. Yeah, because if it, if it becomes a second job, it, it, you can get burned out on it really fast, man. And, uh, you definitely got to keep family involved and friends involved. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, I, that's you know, that's, that's all we are. We're just a bunch of, you know, bunch of dads and sons out there. You know, we have three father-son groups, or four father-son groups on my team. You know, we got myself and my dad. We got Aubrey and Brian right and they're, they're my tire guys. And, you know, Clayton, Clayton Parrish and his dad, and then Mike New and Trey New. Um, you know, they do my graphics and help on the car too. So that's all we are is a bunch of, uh, you know, dads and sons that enjoy watching cars go round and round. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's what makes that's that's it what, sound. Uh, that's why it's fun though. That's the back model. You got to be up for pressure. Oh, yeah. Connor, what'd you think about that big ass truck that was sitting down on the front stretch <laughs> last weekend? Monster truck. Uh, personally, I was waiting for it to get off of the front stretch because I, I, uh, I'm, I'm no games on race day. Like when it comes up to the actual race, just because. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't eat. I hardly drink anything. I mean, I. So when I'm sitting there, you know, waiting to get in the race car, and then I see grave, you know. Some want to be grave digger come up on the front stretch. I'm like, all right, you know, this is cool and all. I'm glad you, I'm glad you're here, but let's uh, let's get the late model race and, and then you know then we can do it at the end of the night or something after everybody else races. Because I'm sure I'm sure everybody else kind of feels the same way. I don't know about all that. So that's why I, where my head stays on it at least. Oh, now I did like the uh, I did like when they brought that V8 SWAT RX8 out there for the drift preview. 
that was pretty impressive because he he backed that thing in the corner at like 100 miles an hour. But uh, yeah, the, mo the monster truck show wasn't much for me. We could have him jump your late model. No. <laughs> that was no, a little no. too slow. Sorry about that. Yeah, we can jump a uh, – we can all go to the junkyard and throw in on a couple cars or something, but I don't think we're going to be jumping my late model anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, when we, we went, when we went to the Rattler this year, I wouldn't even hardly get next to, near the snake, let alone let, some, let someone jump my old late model. So. <laughs> We, uh, but that's another thing, you know, racing is, a, you know, it's all about just the experience at this point for me. You know, I want to, I want to try maybe run a snowball derby or something, something cool like that. Yeah. That would sound good for you. Left short. Yeah. Yeah. It would, uh, it would be very good for me. So I, I'd like to get in a super, I guess that's the answer to your arc question. That's my the next one. I want to try getting a, a super late model. You just cause I, I think that's a. You know, you got to be really disciplined to, to win in those just because how much power they got and stuff like that. So yeah, I think I would enjoy it. Like, yep. car, like yeah, cars like tour? Like the, like the old pro cars used to be. I, I drew, I drew yeah, like the, the, you know, the, old, the old past series or some, or you know, north south or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to drive. That's the way the old, the old pro cars that I drew, I drew back in 93, 96 were the exact same cars, the offset cars with the, with the high horsepower engines on them. And uh, we ran Bristol. Homestead, everywhere within things. They're, uh, fast. They're fast. Now, the Cars Tour has uh, super late models. Are they close to what you're talking about? No. no, no those, yeah, those are the exact cars. Yeah, those are those are supers. The, uh, at the back. The super late models are 12 inches off the car. Oh. Yep. So, you know, they're offset chassis. That, yeah. You know, they got the seal, that sealed motor that makes probably, you know, 650, something like that. Yeah, about they, run, they run on the same tires. They can bump stop all four corners. They weigh. 400, 500 pounds lighter, so yep. they uh they're they're built for going fast. Oh yeah. Yep. You, you gonna try to run the uh, cars tour race when it gets here? No, you know there's there's so much that's different about you know that can be different about those cars that, that I don't have. You know all all my shocks are NASCAR shocks, not cars tour shocks. Just and I, I mean I could definitely order or rent some, but. I think uh, you know we got one task at hand this year, and that's trying to win late mile, you know, late mile races at Langley on on the weekly basis, and try to get a championship or something here or there. Mainly just you know focus on bringing a good piece and trying to win each race, and whatever happens at the end of the year happens. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let you get back to trying to hook the big here. one. <laughs> what was that, Sammy? So we got a pretty sunset out there. <laughs> Take a picture of the sunset. Wow, yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's pretty as shit, right, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't beat it. Hey, Connor, good to have you out there. Have a, have a good one, and we look forward to seeing you this coming weekend. All right, I will see y'all Saturday. All right, you luck. betcha. Have a good night. Report back on the fish. <laughs> man. That's He's oh, he's down. Got robbed of one this weekend. That last kind of last oh, caution, gosh. man. He he had, he had that thing sewn up that they had had that last two calls. Just now, you know, hung around, but went right down outside of him too. Drugged the shit out of him, man. <laughs> well, you know, listen, listen to him talk to us. It's good to hear him. I, I can remember several years ago, but it's good to hear him now. He's one hundred percent focused on his program. Um, and, and you talk about asking about the monster drug thing. I remember. Last year before, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I talked to him, and you can tell on race day when he's got racing on his brain, and he don't think about anything else. Because when you ask him a question, if it's not about racing, he's almost not going to be paying attention to it, or asking something about his car. Um, and you're liable to get an answer you might not be looking for if he's having a bad day on it. And I don't mean that badly for him, but you know, when it comes time to get into the racetrack, you've got to be 100% racing. Uh, and he really is. When he comes there, He's got his game face on. That's exactly what he focuses on all day. You have to concentrate on these cars. I mean, you, you, yep. you have to. I mean, I, I drove for a long time, man. I mean, for a lot of good teams and, and a lot of people. And I watched drivers come up through that are, are great drivers and, and throughout the series and still driving. Some of them retired. I mean, you uh, you have to be focused once that green flag and you're going around the pace lap. Uh, you yeah. have to be focused when you're working on a car, but you also have to have 
open mind to everything going on around you because if you if you completely shut everything out of everything you have to know everything around you all the time and that's something you just gotta that's something you gotta do you gotta have an open mind when it comes to you know your crew your what people are talking about stuff like that i mean you, yeah, yeah. you got to be focused once that green flag drops you've got to know exactly what you're going to do on that first lap what you're going to do if this happens that happens and all that stuff and that's that's all part yeah. of being a good driver you got to be focused all the time yeah he, he's impressive too. That's one thing I like about the local racing, and, I, and I've been up to the big boys as well too. But when we when he comes to, because you know I work out at Langley anyway. But when he bring, when this car comes up for inspection after race or anything like that, it doesn't matter what's got to be pulled off the car. He's out there with wrenches in his hand working on it. Uh, and that, that's a lot to say about the local cars. And most of our guys when they come out there, whatever it is, it's got to be done to their car. They're going to be knee deep in it most of the time. Um, I would not have a driver in my race car that didn't work on the car. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wouldn't have it on the local. Now, now, when you get up in the West yeah. Coast, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Deal, if, yeah. That, if that person, boy, girl, man, whatever, does not want to touch that race car and wants to just sit in that seat and drive, he ain't going to drive my piece. Man, yeah. you see that when you see somebody's parents come with their kids, though, these kids come out there, they're driving the car, they're not telling them to go sit up in the trailer. Take it easier and get yeah. ready to race. Oh, crap, uh, they, you need to get your ass out there and work on that car. No, you, you need to know the piece. You need to know about what you're doing. You need to know about, because if, when you go out and, and, and like, if Connor went out or whoever, or Mark or whoever, or, or even me goes out in the car and you're driving, you need to, you can't come in and say, oh, it's tight and walk off. Oh, it's loose and walk yeah. off. You got to say, it's yeah, tight. It. You know, it's tight here. It's tight here. Maybe we need to do this. You might not, the, the crew might not agree with you or something like that, but you work together to figure out what you need to do to the car. But you yeah. got to know that piece that you're driving. You can't just yeah. be, I mean, at a local level like this. I mean, yeah, of course, like I say, in the Winston Cup and the Infinity and stuff like that, you got freaking engineers. You got guys that are paid to take yeah, care of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just, you but that's, I mean, you, you guys like him, Greg, Danny, uh, all folks who got out there at our level, they're all the same way when it comes time. And like you said, though, they've got to be able to talk to you if you're one of the mechanics on the car to discuss what's happened yep. and work your way through getting it fixed. And that's just, you know, after going to several races outside of our area, even some other local type tracks, I think our guys really do a good example of, of, uh, of just that. Being able to drive the car, race it, work on it, and then talk to each other about what it's going to take to make it better. I mean, you see, you go out there on, on any Saturday, Danny's down there, he's working on a car. I've seen him many times. Look over there, and Danny's yeah. underneath the car with his feet sticking out with his driver's suit on. I mean, you, you, you see guys doing that all up down pit road. That's just that's just yeah. Saturday night racing at Langley Speedway. I mean, that's yeah. that's what it's all about right there. I mean, so you, you have to you have to do it because they make people won't help on these race cars anymore. Yeah, that's true. Help on race cars is, is hard now. Yeah. Hey, when we were kids, we couldn't wait to work on one. Yeah, you couldn't wait to get get out there. So I couldn't wait yeah. to go over your dad's house. You know, that's 17, 18 years old, I couldn't wait to get over there. Now, 17, 18 years old, if you don't drive, and you don't want to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, yep. it's it's changed a lot. It really yeah. has. It's it has. Cool We've I'm seen a big change of it. It hadn't changed for the worse. It just it just it's different. Yeah, it's a change. Changed. It's, yeah. it's yeah. just a change, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just something that. You know, they're, they're used to doing, and as older people have been around it, you know, we didn't do it that way, but it's working. Well, you know, you know, so keep doing it. You know. <laughs> Years ago, people, you know, people uh, owned these cars were all mechanics and body men. Oh, now they're all business owners. People own these yeah, cars. Yeah. That's yeah. the big difference. Well, and, and you know, the phone we talked about that with uh, Leonard Wood and his brother, having been on the show a few times, and listening to what those guys did back in their day, no college degree, they, they go to engineering school. They saw something that needed to be fixed. They learned how to do it. They found something that maybe we can make it better, and they made it better. Right. Um, like that little mini engine he put together during COVID. Uh, amazing. Oh, yeah. If you listen to him, if you listen to the NASCAR show we did last weekend, he built everything for that car. Mm -hmm. Everything. I mean, the engine, I mean, was amazing. And to look at it, uh, and I'm sure all high quality stuff, mm -hmm. but you know, it's kind of hard to think that, um, and I'm not demeaning his age, but I'm 68 years old. I know he's older than me. But for a guy his age to be able to get down and look at all the different tools and things he had to use to make that engine, that thing looked like you could eat off of it. It was so clean, and I'm sure it worked. Man, think about trying to make a crank for that thing that small. <laughs> yeah, Mike, exactly. Think about that. Mike Joy. A crank and cam you had to make for that motor. Think about that, man. How much engineering do you think went into that? Mike, Mike Joy say? on on the broadcast was last week, maybe. He said they were talking about uh, you know the the. Uh, 
when it was a throwback week, it was a throwback weekend, and said it, uh, that Leonard Wood was a Thomas Edison of NASCAR. Oh, and, no doubt. And he and Smokey Munich, you know, never, like I said, never went to college, and they just were natural engineers. And uh, I've seen some of the stuff that Leonard has made. Uh, they're building duplicates, or, you know, or, or replicas of the cars they raced back years ago. But he built a little miniature version of the Indy car that uh, Jim Clark went with, and they crewed on that year. And it's about a third scale replica, and it runs and drives and all that. And uh, he's got a lawnmower that's like not good to like eighty-five mile an hour, or something <laughs> like that. That um, sounds like got, a Tony Stewart lawnmower. Yeah, yeah, he's got all kinds of stuff, and, and uh, you know, I'd love to go. Hopefully, one of these days that museum gets back open again. Now things are getting back. I like to go look in his garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so what's fun is I was, you know, I, I, I moderate a, a page for talking about racing prior to 72 and with cup racing, whatever you want to call it. And I asked him about the 57 Ford, the supercharged car they had. And he said, oh, yeah, we took it out in the highway and laid rubber to second and third gear with that thing. I'm going like, okay, you know, it is, is as <laughs> nice people as they are. Everybody says they're the greatest people you ever want to meet. That he's out there burning rubber on the highway back in 1957. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that. I had a good friend of mine just yesterday post a picture of a uh, 63 Ford that he's got as a drag racer out in Texas. Mm -hmm. And in third gear, third gear, the front wheels are still off the ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 427. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome, uh, awesome engines. You know, that's. Uh, I think what I read about him. Yeah. 300 or 312 cubic inch. I first saw a chart that had a different engine for, you know, like 1967. I looked at it and said, 300 horse, 312 cubic inch wide block. And I'm going, what in the world? And it said, supercharged. Excuse me? Because I was just learning about all this history stuff. And, you know, holy cow, you know. Uh, I found a study that's got, had all the pictures of the engine, different angles and shots. And I had that post on my Facebook page. And I Guy's a great model maker out in like Indiana, and uh, he posted on a page. And I'm looking for pictures on how, because even though it's hidden, he had an engine just like it's a real car, and wanted to know where the, the lines go. And I, and I, checked him a picture uh, that I had found on that page, which is no longer existent uh, the website. And uh, where those fuel, where those oil overtime lines go from that supercharger, and he said thank you. And he's got those on there just like the real thing, but in the car you never see it because he took a, the pictures he had when, he, when he's building it. So that thing is like a real thing. That was 125 scale. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, you know. I heard you say earlier that you were out there for the first race in 19, that reopened lane in 1960. I think it was 63 if I remember correctly. Who won that race? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, know who, I know who it is, but I want to find out who The dirt track. It was, of course, it was dirt track back then. He had Ron Harris and. and, and uh, <laughs> uh, Ray Hendricks and Red Foot in the 90 car, and I was a Ford, and I was screaming in my head off for that. But uh, no, I, my memory's not that good. No, that run. I saw, I found a picture on the internet of that car coming out of turn four mm -hmm. sideways, and it didn't have, it couldn't see the name on the roof, but it said that Marsden mat, that pierced yeah. uh, steel they used for runways on the, on the B-29s in, in the Pacific War for the guardrail, mm -hmm. and the thing was sideways. It's a beautiful car, and I found it, and I posted it, I said, I don't know who this is, but it's beautiful, and the guy posted a picture of him sitting in the car, and you can tell the colors of the car, it's black and white, and his name on the roof of it. Okay, that's your that's great uncle, one. right? I'm your great uncle. Yes. Yeah, Rod, yeah. Rod, Rod and uh, uh, the car had the white stripes on it, with the black with the white stripes. Uh, it was uh, 23, I think it was. Yeah. I've yeah. got it on my Facebook page, yeah. but it was... You know, I got I got a page of albums that I love the coops, and I got all these pictures I collected of all these coops and stuff like that. So I've, well, that was my, that was my uh, that was my uh, grandpa's car. Uh, yeah. That, uh, but I mean, yeah. back then it was back then they you know, pull tires off cars out in the parking lot and change yeah. the engines. And I mean, yeah. they go out the parking lot, pull the engine out of the car, and you know, they drive yeah. it to the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think they still had the stock grill on it, oh, yeah. Chevrolet. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, the Wood Brothers, when they built there, when they had the, in the 65, when they had the Ford was boycotting and racing, they built a 36 Ford, 30, excuse me, 37 Ford coupe. Those NASCAR rules that you had have a stock steel, 100% steel roof. So 36 Chevrolets and Buicks and Pontiacs, whatever. 
was the oldest Chevrolet, old GM product, and 737 Ford was, I think it's a beautiful, most beautiful car in his Ford ever built. And the original car had 289 in it, and it had full fenders, and I think they fabricated the grill and all that. Gorgeous car. It couldn't keep up with everybody else, so then they cut the front end fenders off of it, stuck a 427 in it, and hit over. Oh, one of the last cars. <laughs> Front trunk was your dad's all light. Uh, a yeah, 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 yeah. I had a picture. They bought my car. Thirty-six, nineteen thirty-six. Chevrolet, uh, Chevrolet right. Coupe. Yeah. Yep. I had a picture. I think the Ron Harris actually drove that car after we both sold it. Because mm -hmm. there's a picture of sitting in the pits, and the pit board says Runt on the top of it. Yeah. So. Uh, Run, yeah, I want a lot of races. I mean, all the old, old, old drivers like that. I mean, when you know, the five H boys out of Richmond. Oh yeah. Four, four H guys. Four H. The Harris Hendrix Lexus in Harrisville. Yeah. 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 That was the four. They called them the four H boys. And if yeah. I know where you went, South Side, Harrisville will kick him and Rump will kick everybody's butt. And Tommy Langley and you had Ray Hendrix and Sonny and mm -hmm. Runt, they would battle it out there. I mean, yeah. that was the original four H boys of, of yeah. NASCAR. My first race car was Blood Out. Chad Fairfield's old 67 Chevelles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. I was down, I went down to South Side. <laughs> Of course, it's sad that they closed that place, but mm -hmm. uh, went down to Southside. It was in, I think, in 19, and uh, DJ was driving for a modified that I owned, and we were over down and run. So I took him down there to show him the racetrack. Yeah. He never should have seen a racetrack. And uh, I walked in, well, and I, I hadn't been in the racetrack in almost two, about, about 18 years. And uh, I walked down Pitt Road, and the very first person I run into was Bud Sexual. So oh, I'm, Lord. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I said because Bugs is, is uh, he's, he's pretty outspoken. He's country, but he, uh, <laughs> he asked me what I was doing yeah. up there. <laughs> a little salty. Yeah. He said, he asked me in his way of what was I doing. Yeah, well, Roger there. said, this is the internet, so SEC the rules will apply. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you can well, you was, can even f bomb, but I can't I, say squat. I don't know what he's doing now. Uh, no, he's my age. age. And he uh, not to close south side down. He might have just hung it up because. Uh, it's right there in his backyard, and that's where the bugs grew up at, was yeah. outside. Yeah. Well, I had a, actually was there when it was Dude Ranch, and I was looking on, um, on Wikipedia, and I think they got the order of the names of the track wrong, but Dude Ranch got kind of in the middle, and it should be the beginning. I found the pictures in 1957, and I remember because it was, what's the front stretch now, was the back stretch. The back stretch. Okay? And yeah. I, I remember sitting in the stands one time, and my dad had a record, so we were inside two or three races. But when I saw that picture, man, you're talking about flashbacks. I remember that. Now I see the picture. That's the <laughs> ranch. I don't have to tell what the caption was or anything because they had railroad ties stuck up like this. It wasn't a guardrail. Mm -hmm. They had three or four rows of guardrail. And you can see, whoever took the picture, you can see the old boards. Mm -hmm. It was splintered and all the steps sitting there getting splinters in your butt. They used, um, have a big, used to have a big tree in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, and, and tree. Gene That's Lovelace, I was oh, in wow. the infield. Gene Lovelace lost the left front tire and led left for a lap and a half for the, for the tire rod broke, hit the wall, going into turn. <laughs> well, turn the tree down. <laughs> yeah. But I don't forget that. Uh, and it, it had a, it was a black and yellow number 23 coupe that had the side panels on those cars and it had GMC on it. So, can't like that. You got a GMC 6 on there. And he was kicking everybody's butt with that car. Whoever yeah. was driving it. Supposedly, Gene Lovelace drove it some, too. Uh, the black car with, with yellow stripes. Yellow, yellow sides and had a red 23 on it. And had GMC, the GM, old GMC script on the side panels. So they have to, you know, the root, you know, the, the hood, cam shell hood like this, and the side panels on those old cars, most of them took them off. Yeah. They had them on there. So you couldn't see the engine. And when I was drag racing uh, with my car, my buddy's car, I was down at Creed drag strip way out of darn near North Carolina. And a guy goes flying on the track, and I heard that sound. I said, I hadn't heard that sound in like 60 years. Oh, wow. And I went over there, and he had a Chevy 2. And if I don't know how to identify the motor, I guarantee you he had a GMC 6 on there. And nobody knows what those cars look like, engine like. So you stick one in there and take, well, that's a stock Chevrolet, yeah. a GMC 6 cylinder. Oh, hell no. It wasn't. I thought yeah. that. Yeah. Well, Tommy Redman was still running the 6 cylinder saloon in the early 70s in Wendell. Yeah. <laughs> A lot, a lot of great drivers come out of uh, Langley and Southside area, this whole area around here. Yeah. I mean, all the way up. I mean, when, even when I started driving, I mean, you had, you know, Bill Warren and, and mm -hmm. Johnny Livingston and, and uh, the guys that people don't even know you heard about, Johnny Livingston, Billy Atkins, uh, Mike Buffkin, yeah. Joe Gata. I mean, yeah. the list just goes on and on. Bob Trees back then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all, all them guys that uh, uh, with, uh, with Eddie Falk and Joe Falk and Randy Hutchinson, I mean, Oh, oh yeah, Tommy Ellis and yeah, I mean, yeah. the list goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah. And then it moved up to you know, Phil and Pete Mellon. 
that Bubba Adams, Elton, Elton yeah. Sawyer, Roger Sawyer. I mean, it just the list just goes on and I on. I remember Pete Midland run out there, and Pete's auto plate still yeah, running. You know what? Some a lot of them drivers have more talent than guys are up there right now, but never got a chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, up in the upper series. What, yeah, there what happened? Guys that were driving. What happened with Roger? Because didn't he come out and start running like the Enduros or he Roger, the Super Street? He runs the Enduros yeah. once in a while, but his he tried he drove the modified uh, out there. Yeah, uh, the black I thought so. He he was driving the Mike that actually went and went Sean had his accident. Oh, uh, he uh Roger's got some back problems and the modifieds beat you up pretty bad. And I think uh, he realized that he didn't need to be in that thing. Yeah. Uh, but he has a blast with that Enduro car. <laughs> and I, I raced a many a lap side by side and, and got into many a battles on the racetrack and the pits with Roger. But uh, over the years, but it, it's, uh, he's a good friend. I mean, yeah. that's Man, one back seemed to be common ailment with race car drivers. David Pearson quit when he did because his back was so bad. And then he did that one. Legends race where it was a, the full cars. Yeah. And back then, they didn't have the best seats. No, they were, uh, we didn't have. I mean, when I the first year I drove, and, and then Phil and all of them can tell you this. When we first, when I first went out there, my first car had a homemade aluminum seat that we actually made and welded in the shop. That wow. So you set on a piece of aluminum, they draw around the bottom, and then they make the sides. Mm -hmm. And um, I ran an open face mag four helmet. Yeah. Bubble goggles, no gloves. No. Uh, no. Tennis shoes. Oh God! The worst thing in the world you can do if you get caught in a fire. Yeah, tennis shoes and a race and a race suit. That's what we ran. I mean, you had regular the road bar tubing was uh, the stuff you get black iron roll yeah, roll pipe. The, the, the black the black insulation. Yeah, yeah, put that on the road bar. It was a darn. You know, I, I can remember a day when we had to get Sean Maluzo coming to the pits if he didn't have his shoes on. <laughs> he would drive barefoot. He was a, yeah, he, he drove drive barefoot. That's yeah, it. Sean, Sean drove. <laughs> Sean drove barefoot for a good while. I mean, I, I remember back when he yeah. ran, back when I was when, it, when I first my rookie season at Langley was Sean's. I think Sean came in. He was that year or the year after. Uh, had a purple number forty eight. Uh, yeah. And he came in. I think it was the year my first year there. I was a rookie, and I think Sean came in the following year. So the year I was rookie it was the same year that Roger Sawyer was a rookie. Uh, and uh, a couple of ones I can't remember. Man, I can tell you a funny story. At Langley Speedway, old Dick Purdue was driving the car out there. It's probably like 70, 68, 69, somewhere in that area. Jumped out of the car, was in Bermuda shorts, a blade beater top, and flip flops. We're going after somebody's having a straightaway that the boat walked around. <laughs> I didn't ever go that far. Yeah. Like I said, when we, when we first started driving, you had no no neck supports. Uh, yeah. Didn't even yeah. have the head support beside your helmet. Yeah. I mean, you held your head up yourself. And it wasn't bad at Langley. I tell you what, you go to South Boston. I went down to South Boston and ran a, a 300 lap at South Boston before we had all that stuff. I thought my head was going to fall off. Yeah. I mean, you could not. You go in the corner, your head would go over here like this, going down through the yeah. corner. Wow. So the guys was, yeah. had the seats cut off about your shoulders. Oh, you had to well, put a little aluminum plate to the roll bars to hook yeah. it so your head wouldn't go well, down. The guys <laughs> had back in the 60s, the, the Grand National guys had a thing yeah. hooked on the side of their helmet and go underneath their arm. That, that was their head up. That's all sprinting. That, that come off of. Uh, Sprint cars, yeah. You know, keep their arms in the car. Well, the sprint car, they'd actually put things on the, the seat belts to keep your elbows up. So you see guys flipped in sprint cars, and sometimes they didn't have those. Their hands would be knocked out, and the hands would be over top of the roll cage, and possibly get your the first arm thing. The, the first thing that came out back, I can remember driving through the different cars. The first thing that came out was that strap. My, mm -hmm. They call it helmet support, and it went under your arm, mm -hmm. hooked to a little clip on your helmet, so when you go down the corner. When you turn, of course, natural, you drop this shoulder. When you, it would hold your head down in the car, and you know you, your head wouldn't fall over here. So right. the racetrack. But I, I'll tell you a story real quick that, that comes up. Roger Sawyer was out here one night. We was running a that was a 250 lap race at Langley, and Roger that's where we had all these head support stuff. Well, Roger uh, would go down down in the corner, and when he'd get on the straightaway, he would throw one hand. Well, he would take his hand and put it on that row bar to hold his head up. <laughs> I was, behind him. I was behind him, and it was getting late in the race, and I was a little bit faster than he was. And uh, we had the radios in. We was under caution, and uh, told my dad, I said, I think Roger was getting tired. He said, what do you mean? I said, he's down the back straight away, he's holding his head up with his helmet. He said, well, every time he does it, hit him. <laughs> he, said, what? he said, every time he does it, he's hitting. I said, all right. So we went back running, every time we go down the back straight away, every time Roger would put his head up, hold his head up, I'd pop him in the back bumper. He grabbed the steering wheel. <laughs> Probably we were at about five or six laps like that. He went. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he called after and said, Why will you hit me like that? I said, My dad told me to. We used to have a lot of, I mean, we still do have fun racing, but uh, it's not there, like it was. No, it was it's nowhere near like it was, but it's, it's uh, we used to have a blast. Yeah. I, mean, I used to have a blast running with. You know the biggest thing I've seen? And, I mean, not Roger, but uh, Elton and Roger and Phil Warren. I mean, I raced a many side by side yeah. with Phil Warren out there. I think me and Danny still hold the record. We were we was out there when the racetrack. Remember, I think Wayne had the racetrack, and it was everybody says one group racetrack, one group. They couldn't run side by side. Couldn't run side by side. And uh, nah. so everybody would they were just you would just kill each other get to the bottom. I was out there one night and started on the outside pole, and Danny started on the inside. I think it was. And they dropped the green flag, and I ran on the outside of Danny for 42 laps. Ooh. 42 laps dead door to door with him. That's a good car. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Fans I are mean, going nuts in the stands. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was a crazy race, and, and uh, they had Danny actually ended up winning the race. And uh, they asked Danny, asked the race about it. Danny said, It was a good race, but we ran side by side way too long. <laughs> <laughs> and so, man, the biggest difference I see in the racetrack right now. Years ago when we was racing, all the drivers everybody hang out in the pits and talk and have a good time. Now, as soon as the race over, all the drivers pull in, everybody's loading up and stuff and getting out. You know, the fans yeah. don't have the opportunity to see drivers act like these. They don't kind of look at the like they used to. I, mean, no, back, no. I, remember, I remember back years and years ago, I mean, there would be people lined up. Oh, oh yeah. Down oh, down yeah. Waiting to get in the pits yeah. to come over there to, to talk to the drivers. And we would stay there. Yeah. You know, stay there until one or two in the morning. I would stay yeah. there until everybody left. I mean, it would yeah. just, but then the drivers would do that now, but it's just a different. It's just a yeah. different atmosphere. Well, you know, I mean, you talk about when the Cukes ran and, the, and they had the fuel injection and they had a big long race. I forget what race it was. It doesn't really matter. The guy, the announcer was great. He kept saying he's going to run out of fuel. He's going to run out of fuel. He's going to run out of fuel. So they, like I said, they didn't have the side panels on the old Cukes. And I'm looking and I'm staring. I'm not seeing these eight pipes sticking up like the other guys were on the fuel board and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hell, keep that going. It looked like a box. So it's about the only time I ever going down into the pits, I've gone a couple times. The first time I went down, and waited and said, let us in and went down there and had the car up in the trailer. And I look and it's got the old Chevrolet fuel injection on it. You can see the leak. No, it was like the fuel he had all that. This is the fuel injection. And they drained out about five gallons of blue Sunoco 260 out of the gas tank. And he wasn't running out of gas. Everybody else was running out of gas. But he said, he's going to run out of gas. No, he didn't. Do you remember Albert Falk when he was out there racing and I was oh, yeah. racing with him? Oh, yeah. We had yeah. one night. We weren't up at the front like you guys were. We were further back, but we were tolling for about 10 laps side by side. I was on the outside. Never touched either one. I ain't going to say me and Danny didn't touch. We, we tore the side of the car. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good race. I mean, it, and it, it, they, you see some good side by side racing out there right now. I mean, these guys put on a good show yeah, every they, night. They run side well, by side. Well, they get on the outside, man. Yeah, I was spotting for, uh, I actually spotted for Casey out there one night, and he got hung on the outside for third. I think he was on third. And, um, uh, I was on the radio with him. I said, man, I said, there's a small hole behind him. You want to get down there? I said, but I'll stay right where you at. And he, he ran that outside and he hung in there. And we actually yeah. ended up getting around him. I can't remember who was racing. We actually ended up getting around him and getting down in front of him. But he had to work his butt off. Man, I mean, him and Butterbean, yeah. when, I, when I was helping him a few years back, him and Butterbean were going side by side, lap after lap after lap, never touch each other. Oh, wow. And everybody's so bad about Butterbean. I said, well, that's what can do. You know, they, they both have respect for each other. They, they drove yeah. they were side, side by side just about every race and never touched each other. Every one of the guys that are in right now, every one of them are good drivers. I mean, you yeah. can't drive these cars uh, and not be a, a, a good race car driver. It's just it's the ones that right now, it's the ones that are, are working hard. Yeah. And, and really doing the technical stuff on the race cars, and and, and it's it's a lot of this too. I mean, you gotta yeah. have you gotta have a lot of money behind you. Yeah. Like my cars, you really yeah. do. I mean, they are so expensive to run anymore. I mean, and a lot of these guys are getting cut help and getting here. Well, you have to actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, for you to win, for you to win races, you almost have to have all that yeah. knowledge yeah. coming down the pipes to you. Uh, and, and Mark is really smart, like like Connor said earlier. Mark is really really smart about a race car. But where do you think he gets all that technical information? Mark it channels down, and, and Mark studies. He talks to a lot of people. Yeah, he talks to everybody, and he studies it, and he figures out how that's going to work in his car or whoever's car he's working on. And that's just smart. I mean, that's, and that's what you got to do nowadays because it's just like I say, it's just so much more expensive and technical. 
Uh, yeah. It used to be years ago, it really is. Well, they, they didn't let bump, I think the biggest, the worst thing they ever did was let Lake Rose on bump stops. Worst thing they ever did, in my opinion. Hey, Terry, I, I need was, you to take care of this. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, I, I, I think that's just really took it away from a lot of people that still could break. Yeah, I, w I wish that, uh, I wish they, and that's one thing I do like about the limited late model series, and I'll think they're coming back this year, like maybe next year. Um, that limited late model series takes it back to they, they have there's no bumps, there's only certain shots they can run on the cars, uh, no less than a 500 pound right front spring. They're running, they're all going, they're going completely crate motors next year with them. Where right now they can run built motors or two or three crates, where next year is strictly one motor, crate motor, and it. it It'll make it affordable. It, 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 make makes, it, affordable it makes it affordable and it, and it, it puts, I mean, it more affordable. brings the driver. I mean, it right. brings the driver to the surface. I mean, you're going you to have to outdrive the guys. You're going to have to swallow them. Yeah. I mean, you got, you're going to have to outdrive them. And I, I like that series. That's because I you like keep the car moving. I like late <laughs> models. And that's I mean, because I, I never drove anything else when I came up. I didn't start in mini stocks. I didn't start yeah. in grand. I went straight in late models. I mean, first car I drove was a, a dirt late model. And then two weeks after that, I was in a, in a brand new Savakis uh, late model stock car yeah. the Speedway. So I came straight into late model. I didn't drive anything else. My rookie year was a rookie year in a late model stock car. I mean, it, it was it. Yeah, but you had some, a lot of knowledge behind yes, you. Yes, I did. I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, but, so I love late models. It just, I don't know. It's just. It's I mean, gotten out of hand. It's gotten out of hand. It really has. It really, it really has. I mean, I, and I love them to death. Like I said, I love to watch them race because they put on a good show and they're fast cars. They, they and the fans love them. But and they, they and like I said, they race good side by side. But it, it has it really became over the top. Yeah. When it comes to what these guys have to spend and the time that they got to put into them because of all this crazy technology. Yeah. They, they took it. They took it right out of the head yeah. for the local guy. You know, that's yeah, just important. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's not a. I think Wayne Rapac said this the other day. It's not a uh, two guys in a garage. Mm -hmm. It's not a sport anymore. No, it's not. It, it, you can't do it anymore. You have to, you have to have all this high dollar te technology to run a car. Got have the technology. Got have the budget. The bu that, that, that yeah. budget one late model is hard to come by these days. No, for no, that, no, for, no, for, no, for no, the average mechanic, for body man. I mean, I love that late model. I mean, I, if I, I'd love to have one right now, put DJ in it or, or, or anybody in it, but it's just, I can't, I can't see spending really? that money. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I can, I can get the money, to, and I, I, I can spend the money, but I don't think it's, to me, it's not people. No, yeah, it's really, if you're not up on the technology, it's passed us by. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's definitely passed me by. Yeah. It's Te technology by. for us, Terry, back then was learning how to take and hook our wheels on the inside of Oh, it's, off it's, of that track and run around the corner. It's completely different. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Car. I mean, it, the first car I drove with the bump stops on it because, uh, was the modified down at the main. And they drive a lot different? They do. Uh, and when I drove it, uh, the first time I went down there, it was like, uh, the first time I went down there was with the old stout stuff on it. The car was, was messed up. But um, this time I went down there with the new stout. And it's, there's no movement in the car, so the, the feeling that you get from the car is not nowhere even close to even in the realm of what it used to be. When you feel the roll, when you feel this, you feel how the front end's working. It's, it's like driving, it's almost like driving a bobsled. I mean, it's a go-kart. It's almost <laughs> like a big go-kart. Uh, and people say, well, the car wow. drives. And, you know, a lot of guys say, well, gosh, the car drives itself. It, it don't drive itself. Oh, you no. still got to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I mean, well, it's it's people like that can say what you want to say. That you, The driver in that car is driving that car. Yeah. But the car just doesn't. It didn't feel nowhere near like they used to. And, and it, uh, So it took me some getting used to with the with the bump stops. And I'm still not always used to them. Do you but, think you could be more competitive without the bump stop? Me? I mean, do you I think you can make the car competitive without the bump stops? Yeah, like it's oh, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's, well, I'll give you an example. Um, was it 19 or when, when Greg, Greg had that old car, the 19 car, I can't know which one it was. That car that he had was not on bumps. That was yeah, I old, remember that. It was an older chassis, so it was built to run on that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't qualify well, but the car would just stay there all night, and he would just get faster and faster and faster, and those would fall off. And that was an cool. old style setup. It was just a regular, regular, it right, wasn't regular shock, but it was shocks and springs and no yeah. bump stops. But his new car, of course, the chassis built to run all this new technology. Yeah. 
Uh, so if you have a really old chassis, uh, an older car that runs on that type of setup, yes, you can definitely be competitive with it, even when it races with it. Because every time Wayne, every time Wayne has been it, does it, you, here they've done change over now that they had a bit go from coil, coil overs, from bucket springs, coil overs. So there's, there's thousands of dollars, you know. And these springs for these springs for these coil overs ain't cheap if you get good ones. No. So, I mean, you know, really, and I, I told them, I'm convinced you can still go out there and run with the, with the, with the, with the you can have the car, you yeah. Know? You can run it, but like I say, you would have to change the the, the, the way the snout is on the car, um, the geometry on the back of the trailer on the way they mount and all that stuff yeah. to run the regular. I mean, some of you modify, a lot of you modify don't run bumps. Uh, some of them run one bump, some of them run no bumps, some of them run all bumps. So there's a lot of different uh, scenarios. I really wish a hundred percent that they wouldn't let modify. I mean, uh, they shouldn't have never let them bring them into the yeah. modified sport coat, which one be a, uh, it, it would have kept the cars a little more affordable. I mean, it was the, so you give up with an eight-inch tire, you know, right? Eight-inch eight tire, so that's it. You know, but the you know, offset it by putting you on bumps. Yeah. So, so there, you know, it's just. But the whole good. idea of that class anyway, right? A more affordable race, quick, a more affordable, but a quick race car. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, they were no such all, thing. They were worried about. They were <laughs> that's worried for about, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they were all worried about. Relatively we went to the meetings and stuff, and they were like, uh, let's run aluminum hits. Oh, no, no, we can't run aluminum hits. Uh, let's run MSD. Oh, no, we can't run MSD. I said, well, why? He said, well, it gives it more horsepower. So? Yeah. You got us on eight-inch tires. We yeah. can't use it anyway. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you can only use so much of it anyway. But we're going to get good iron heads anymore. You can't. I mean. You can still get them. But the, 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 thing, oh. about, the thing about the heads are is, is uh, you can buy. And then I told them a bunch of times, my dad has a bunch of other things to have too. You buy a set of steel heads, dark, good dark steel heads or whatever brand you run, you still got to spend $2,300, $2,400 in the machine work and yeah, everything right. else. And it says you can buy a brand new set of race ready bolt on aluminum heads with titanium valves on it for $3,000. So uh, to me, it, and they, it, yeah, I had a thousand dollars or more tied on the other head. I had a couple of officials tell me, "Well, it's a weight advantage." Well, why is it a weight advantage? I said, "A modified, the modified don't run front weight anyway." I said, "A few guys do." I said, "But most of them are, most of them are heavy in the back anyway." We're trying to get, we're trying to get off the rear weight to get it on the front. We can't do it in the first place. Right. It's not going to be an advantage. It's going to be a disadvantage. Really. Yeah. And yeah. the cars are got to be middle weight anyway, so if you lose, you know, you it's, all, it's all the officials' so faults anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, that is, it, 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 it's really nobody. It's really it's, it's the whole industry's fault, pretty much. I mean, it, it, it needs to be That's a group it. that comes together and says, "We're doing it." They need to be done like this. NASCAR has to say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, at, at at the late model division, yeah. yeah. But your lower divisions that needs to be decided by the racetracks and and and. The, the racers and the group that's going to be doing that every week, and, and not just, and it needs to be decided on a, a big group, not just you know eight people that run wings anyway. If you yeah, want to modify race tracks, but yeah, it needs to be everybody there in one big group, put them in a big place, and say, look, I'm going to keep this affordable. What can we do to keep this? Affordable? You know what? The racers are yep. the only worst enemy. You look at you car class when it started. Keep racing. Yep. And they kept all of a sudden you're doing stuff to your motors. Now you're doing stuff to your computer. Now you're getting big wheels and tires. You know they, they put it right out of sight. Now they got six of them it, out there. It, <laughs> it went from it went from being affordable racing yeah. to unaffordable. Well, it went from 24 cars in a field to six because you give the racers what they wanted. The racers are their own worst enemy. They are. Yeah. I mean, if you're never, driver, never seen a, racing, you're never seen a race car driver didn't want to go faster. <laughs> yeah. And everybody wants the trick of the week, my buddy used to call it. Well, the same thing with that. It. They had that Bubba truck class, truck trucks, and then what, what, took some boys in and brought out that Jeff Sampson brought out that old uh, late model truck and ruined that class. They, 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 went, they went from a bunch of trucks down to three. Yep. Yep. It, it, I mean, it's, um, it's uh, uh, Hey, guys, I'm going to bail out. I, I'm, I'm, it's 838 my time, and yep. I've got a wife downstairs. i got to go capture up while she's finished up. <laughs> she's uh, finished up a church meeting as well, too. Yeah. Terry, it was good to see you. Yeah, Honestly, I've been listening. Great to see you too. I missed Andre tonight on my internet feed, but uh, a great time tonight. Good conversation with everybody. And you don't have to stop because of me. I'm just, I just figured I'd blow my big mouth out there, bail out. I'm glad to see you back in racing, though, Terry. I missed you. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I was, I was completely away from it for 
15 years. Too I, long. Didn't, I didn't even walk on a racetrack long. Yeah, I remember. I'm back with you. I remember. You were facing with everybody knew when you come down. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, man. You got to take it easy. We'll see you next All week. Right. Good night, David. We need to get the heck out of here anyway before the restaurant closes before we get <laughs> yep. oh, I can tell you another funny story about the Harrises. My brother was working on Donnie Harrison's house one time, and Terry's sister, Terry's sister Don, she was probably only about three or four years old. And they had this dog that was part wolf named Tiger. Well, Dawn was watching Joe and Andy Bumpkin out in the backyard. Mike Bumpkin was probably watching him out in the backyard. And she just slipped out both of them and turned that door right up and let the dog out. And old Brenda Harris was chasing that dog, trying to get him for him to show that image. Who let the dog out for sure? Who let the dog out? Who? Joe, was scared of the, Joe was scared of the dogs anyway. Yeah. Joe would run across the front yard. And he seen Tiger coming when well, he jumped the fence to our neighbor's yard. Well, he had a big old dope. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. Is that, that. Is that from hopping into the, out of the frying pan into the fire? <laughs> or what? All right, guys. Well, I'm going I'm to just reiterate real quick. Y'all come on out to the Monster Truck Show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, tickets are on sale. Like I said, lane-leeway.com, ticketleague.com. I call 757-773-5363. Get you tickets. Come out. It's going to be a blast. Got a lot of uh, stuff planned for y'all, and uh, you can't—you don't want to miss it. If you miss it, nobody's gonna be talking about it. You're gonna be like, "I wish I went to that." <laughs> Come on out, we'll have a blast. We will. All right, everybody, we're out of here. Good night, Good night all Good night. <laughs> Roger, you got still got your uh, stick inside of.